everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Heather Hirsch. I'm a nationally renowned midlife, perimenopause, and HRT expert. And today I wanna to talk about what are the side effects of hormone therapy when it comes to the use of estrogen. Now, if you are not living under a rock, you are on social media, you're probably hearing all about the benefits of estrogen and the safety of estrogen in the form of hormone replacement therapy for women in perimenopause or menopause. But there are some side effects and you are absolutely right to be wondering, what are the side effects that I should be looking out for? So in this video, I'm gonna go over three of the most common side effects from estrogen and how you can combat those side effects. Because overall, the benefits of HRT absolutely outweigh the risks. And when you get your HRT right, you are really setting yourself up for some generational health. If you don't already follow me on Instagram or TikTok, I'm at Heather HeatherHirschMD, and I really let you weigh in on a lot of these topics. So go ahead and follow me over there. I have a private telemedicine clinic called The Collaborative. I'd love for you to learn more in the descriptions below. And if you're a clinician or you are a woman and you wanna take any of my courses, definitely check out the HeatherHirschAcademy.com, all of which are linked below. So again, when we're talking about a hormone replacement therapy, this can be either in perimenopause or in menopause. Menopause is defined as one year of no period, and perimenopause is the time leading up to that. Now, hormone therapy, especially when it comes to estrogen, is really important because I have this whole ice cream cone theory about hormone therapy. Hormone therapy were an ice cream cone. If you are really craving ice cream, you're really craving the cold, um, you know, the, the creamy ice cream, which is the estrogen. Estrogen is going to treat most of your symptoms as you're going through perimenopause to menopause. And more than that, it's going to help you with the long-term benefits, things like reductions in cardiovascular disease, improvements in your bone health, reductions in diabetes, and more. Progesterone's like the cone, it kinda keeps things safe. In fact, I did a whole great video on progesterone here, definitely check that out, about also the side effects and how you can find the right progesterone. And then testosterone is kinda like the sprinkles on top. But getting the estrogen right is gonna be one of the main components to keeping you on a good HRT regimen that you love and you feel confident about. When it comes to how to use estrogen, you can do this orally in the form of estradiol or conjugated equine estrogen. If you're doing it transdermally, then you could use a patch, a gel, or a spray, and there's even something called the ring, and systemically, this is called the fem ring. Now, the reason you're here is to talk about the side effects from estrogen, so let's get into it. One of the biggest side effects that I see from the use of estrogen is breast tenderness. Now. Don't be confused, this can also come from progesterone. There are estrogen and progesterone receptors in the breast tissue. This is one of the big reasons I actually talk about hormone stacking. So using just one hormone at a time and separating your hormones by about at least two to four weeks. But estrogen definitely can cause some breast tenderness. Now, a lot of women will worry about this, um, and it's really normal. Again, because we want estrogen to go to our brain, to our bones, to our cardiovascular system, we don't want it necessarily to go to our breast tissue or to the uterine tissue because we don't want bleeding, but it, it, it can and, and it does. And so breast tenderness can be really normal. Now, you should not have so much tenderness that you feel like you, uh, maybe if you were ever postpartum and you needed to breastfeed, this feeling of being so swollen or so sore, you know, if someone went to hug you and it felt really tender, those are signs that probably the estrogen dose is too high. And one of the things I would definitely recommend is bringing that estrogen dose back down. Now, what about the kind of tenderness that's just a little bit here or there, kind of feels like twings or little flashes, that can really be normal. And so as you're starting on your hormone therapy, you want to discern the difference between what feels like an adjustment and annoying or that sixth sense that something is really not right. And the best way to treat, especially if you feel like you have this immense amount of tenderness, is to probably reduce the dose of estrogen. That is going to help the most. If you're having just little flares of breast tenderness, you could also try adding something like DIM. DIM actually will actually bind to those estrogen receptors, kind of fight for the estrogen that you're taking systemically, whether that's oral or transdermal, and help to reduce the impact that estrogen has on breast tissue. Some of my patients do find this 
helpful. Now, the other thing a lot of women will worry when they feel their breasts being tender is they worry that maybe there's something wrong or their increased risk for cancers. Or again, it's just that mind connection from um, breast to your mind, which is kind of alarming you. Like, should I be worried about this? And it is really, really common, especially if it's both sides, especially if it's kind of global or all over, this is completely normal. In fact, I have tons of videos on the real data behind estrogen and not increasing the risk of breast cancer. And this is all really important to remind yourself if you're feeling breast tenderness, one, this can be normal. If it's too painful, you want to bring that estrogen dose down. The second most common side effect when we use hormone therapy and particularly when it comes to the estrogen is bleeding. I want to get this out right at the beginning, bleeding within the first four to six months, anytime you start hormone therapy or anytime you change the dose up or down the route oral to transdermal, transdermal to oral, or the formulation, estradiol to conjugated equine estrogen, or even the timing of your estrogen. Let's say you're going from a patch to now a nightly gel. This can cause bleeding within the first four to six months. Now, I know if you're watching this, this is really, really important because a lot of doctors scare their patients saying they need ultrasounds and biopsies and they have to go off their hormone therapy. Think about it. Your uterus is meant to respond to hormonal changes. When it senses estrogen, it builds up its lining and then sometimes it will then eventually, what builds up, what goes up must come down. The other thing that can happen is even the ovaries can get involved if they see or feel enough estrogen and you could even ovulate. I have a whole deep dive on the most common reasons for bleeding here, but remember, anytime you're starting hormone therapy or you're changing the dose, route, formulation, or timing, it is within normal limits. Our uterus responds to hormones and we have a canal that leads to outside. It does not, I repeat, it does not mean that anything is immediately wrong. It is so normal. And so this kind of over-medicalization of having some bleeding after starting HRT truly needs to be evaluated with a clinical lens. If there is a reason for you to be bleeding, like we're giving you hormones, that makes tons of sense. Now you wanna make sure that you're on the right progesterone because if you're bleeding, you have a uterus and so you should be on the right dose of progesterone. And sometimes increasing the dose of progesterone can help to stop the bleeding. Sometimes lowering the estrogen dose can help to stop the bleeding. And there's other options as well, including placing an IUD if you need to, so that you can get the right dose of estrogen. If you need a higher dose of estrogen to stop the hot flashes and the night sweats and the vaginal dryness, but that leads to bleeding. If you are bleeding with your estrogen, please know this does not mean that you are not a good candidate for hormone therapy. And you really, really, really should be talking to your doctors if they immediately recommend imaging with an ultrasound or a DNC, because these are usually unnecessary procedures that are gonna traumatize you and make you not wanna take your HRT again. At The Collaborative, we are experts in this. And yes, we wanna make sure that you are safe and we wanna make sure that we don't miss anything but we truly put our thinking caps on to decide when it actually really means that you should get some imaging or a biopsy. Now, if you wanna know, well, okay, you said it's normal, what are those red flags? You know, this could be, of course, bleeding if it's been, um, you've been steady on your hormone therapy for six months onwards, if it's been bleeding typically after like two or three or even four years without changing anything. Again, the most common reason for bleeding is atrophy or a polyp or a fibroid, it's nothing concerning. If you've been on estrogen that's unopposed, you haven't been on the right dose of progesterone, these are things that you should be concerned about if you're having bleeding, and those are things that should be worked up. If you're at high risk for uterine cancer, like you had a family history, or you have metabolic syndrome like hypertension, diabetes, and dyslipidemia, um, these are all risk factors for uterine cancer, combined with maybe not being on a progesterone, et cetera, these would be reasons to do a workup, but it is normal to have bleeding as one of the big side effects of starting estrogen. Another side effect from estrogen is migraines. Now, I see migraines all the time. It is not a contraindication to using hormone therapy. Neither are even migraines with or in fact, the dose of postmenopausal estrogen is so low, it does not increase the risks of strokes. So we definitely can use hormone therapy if you have a headache history, migraines, or migraines with aura. So those are not contraindications. But whether you're a migrainer or not, if you have an increased incidence of say headaches or migraines on estrogen, we wanna make sure we do a little bit of adjustments because estrogen should not be causing headaches or migraines. 
The first thing to think about is the dose may be too high, so could we lower the dose? And the second thing to think about with the migraines is maybe we need to move to a transdermal option, so that could be a patch or a gel. And research shows that actually the more steady the estrogen is, particularly if it's transdermal, the better. So I tend to think that the every 24 hour application of either gel or spray is a really good option if you're getting headaches or migraines with estrogen, or you could do the twice weekly patch, which is better than the weekly patch research has shown to prevent headaches and migraines. But again, you might wanna have a really good conversation with your clinician because developing more headaches while being on estrogen is a side effect, but it's something that we can absolutely handle. Now, I said there were three, but I've got one more bonus one for you, which is weight gain. Now, if you follow me, if you know anything about me, I always say that estrogen should not cause weight gain. And the majority, if not almost all of our patients at the collaborative actually find that estrogen steadies their metabolism or they lose a little bit of weight. One, because they're sleeping better, they feel better, they're making healthier choices, they're going to the gym. Estrogen should not cause weight gain, I promise. You know, there's always outliers, and every time I say this, my comments are always filled with people saying I gained 20 pounds in a week or two on estrogen. If that is the case, it truly means that the dose of estrogen you're on is probably too high, or either the progesterone or the testosterone that you might also be taking if you're taking more than just estrogen are too high. If you are developing weight gain on your hormone therapy, please know this is not to be expected. This is not, you have weight gain to control your symptoms. No, 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 you actually should have a much better metabolism on estrogen. The reason I also say this is because we know that women who take hormone therapy have less weight gain overall in large randomized controlled trials and have less diabetes, which means that estrogen should be controlling your insulin better than if you are not on hormone therapy. So if you are having weight gain from your hormone therapy, I promise you it is time to absolutely change the regimen, find a new knowledgeable clinician, and we will get you back on the right path. Do not give up. All right, guys, I hope you found that video helpful. I love teaching here on YouTube. If you would like to be seen in our clinic, The Collaborative, definitely check out jointhecollaborative.com. We not only have the premier integrative telemedicine platform for women's health, but we also have really taking this to the next level by including our wellness partners who help us with nutrition, fitness, mental health, sexual health coaching, and more. We would love to have you as a patient of the collaborative where you can go straight to the source, get the best care that is absolutely available. So let's join the collaborative.com. If you're a clinician, if you're an allied healthcare professional, like a fitness instructor or a mental health provider, um, a pelvic floor physical therapist, you love this channel, definitely check out the Heather Hirsch Academy. I have tons of courses for you because I really want an army of clinicians and healthcare professionals who can help women because there is millions of women within the United States and billions of women worldwide who need people to help support them on their perimenopause to menopause journey. If you love following me, I definitely recommend you follow me over my socials at Heather Hirsch MD, on Instagram, on TikTok, and wherever else, that's my handle. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this video, subscribe, and leave me a comment. What side effects did you have while you were on estrogen? And what other videos would you like to see? Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys next week for a brand new video. Bye everyone.